Praise Jesus forevermore. Good evening. Welcome to Bible study. You can welcome someone and have your seat. Welcome to Bible study. We thank God for another privilege this evening in His presence. We thank God for His preservation. We thank God for His blessings. We thank Him for His faithfulness. Have you welcomed someone to Bible study this evening? Make sure you welcome someone to Bible study. You are welcome to Bible study. It's good to be here again this evening to commune with the Lord and with one another. And we thank God for always giving us this kind of privilege. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. It's a privilege that shows that we belong to the Lord. Amen. Am I clear enough? Can you hear me well? Okay. So, the privilege of fellowship, the privilege of access, is a privilege that shows that we belong to the Lord. Amen. Praise Jesus. I can hear you. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. So it's because we belong to the Lord that we have this kind of privilege of fellowship with the Lord and with one another and of access to the Father. Praise Jesus forevermore. Is it not just beautiful that you don't need that to see God, to access God, you don't need an intermediary that you can just go there by yourself. You can just be at the corner of your room and you're talking to God because you're a child of God. You're born again and you have this life on your inside. Praise Jesus forevermore. Father, we trust you for grace this evening. We trust you for all times. We trust you for understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise Jesus. Alright, we've been on a conversation, thriving in the midst of famine. Sister Maraji loves that. You love the teaching, right? You know it very well. You know the topic. What's on this topic? What's on this series? The local assembly. Yeah. So Thursday, traveling in the midst of famine. And it's been a wonderful conversation. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. The way I'm sitting down says, this mic is pressing me down. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Father, we trust you in Jesus' name. So traveling in the midst of famine. So we'll be looking at the life of Abraham as one of the icons, one of the examples that we're going to look at in the scriptures as to how the people of God can navigate the seasons of famine, the times of famine. Amen. And that all the things happening in your life, all the things the Lord is taking you through, they are part of the process or processes that builds you up for such seasons upon the face of the earth, for every season upon the face of the earth. Praise Jesus forevermore. So we began to see from the life of Abraham from Genesis chapter 12. And when the Lord called out Abraham from his, his, his country, from his kindred, and from, can we turn off that fan? And from his father's house. Praise Jesus forevermore. And God began to give Abraham some kind of promise. Praise Jesus. Amen. From Genesis chapter 12, between verse 1 to 10, in verse 10, we saw that Abraham experienced famine and that's made him go down to Egypt. Please, I need you to encourage me very well this night. I'm very tired. That's why I'm trying to sit down. But that's the thing that is not working for me. So I need your all of us, all of us cannot, cannot be tired together. Otherwise, we just close and be going home. Let's just go and pack the instrument and hold the jet. So I need you to re- How do you encourage me? Respond. I'm a teacher. I need your response. Understand? Let me pull it out. By the time you respond, I say that we have so much energy. After I finish, I'll not be tired again. I'll not go and break down and my sleep. <laughs> well, just give me energy. Yeah. I need you. I need you to help me. Praise Jesus. I've been stressed for like how many weeks now? Amen. Praise Jesus. 
So in verse 10, we saw that Abraham, we saw famine, that famine appeared. And the first famine we saw in the head was in the time of Abraham. Amen. But things had begun to happen with Abraham before verse 10, before famine. Praise Jesus. Why? Now you need to understand something. I said we are looking at Genesis chapter 12 and 13 to look at the life of Abraham and how to navigate the seasons of famine. Praise Jesus. Now you need to see that that famine arose in verse 10 of chapter 12. Amen. But if you look at it from verse 1 of chapter 12, amen, we didn't see famine. Famine started in, in verse 10. Amen. And now you need to see that before verse 10, many things that happen because famine is not the hallmark of the life of the believer. Are you following me? Now, that narrative started with the will of God. Are you following me? Your life is not characterized by famine. It's characterized by the will of God. Your life is not defined by famine. It's not defined by scarcity. It's defined by what? Talk to me by what? By the will of God. So, from that narrative we saw, the Lord told Abraham, come out, which is his will, his command, his instruction. Then promises, are you following me? And when I moved to verse 10, now saw that there was famine. But famine was not the first thing. We saw things that had happened, conversations between Abraham and God, and things that were happening in Abraham's life before the times of famine, before the time of famine. Because those things, those seasons, are more important to God than the time of famine. Because those things that Abraham experienced, you, you, as you soon find out, find out in the teaching, in the course of the teaching, are things that will, that will, that will prepare Abraham and, uh, and uh, change him, amen, and prepare his heart and make him the kind of person that God wants him to be even in the days of famine. Praise Jesus. But that story is a very, very interesting story because Abraham still messed up. <laughs> Even with all the processes. Are you following me? But verse 12 opened with the account of the will of God. Are you following me? It didn't open with famine. It opened with what? The will of God. So what's the most important thing in, in life of a Christian man? It's the will of God. Because even in the times of famine, what will sustain you is the will of God. Are you following me? So if you look at that scripture, it didn't start with famine. It started with what? The will of God. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, leave the will of God. Are you following me? Promise of God and several other things. Are you following me? They will not go to famine. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Because even in the times of famine, what will sustain you is what? Is the will of God. You are in the will of God. If you are not in the will of God, amen, the times of famine would, would crush you. The times of famine will finish you. The seasons of famine will destroy you. So, what the Lord begins or began to teach Abraham, began to show Abraham, before the times of famine was matter of what? His will. That was the first thing he started to show him. Are you following me? Because at every point in time, we will experience famine. Are you with me? But there are keys and secrets to navigating the times of famine. Because also famine itself as a phenomenon, there's a kind of person that famine wants you to be. There's a kind of attitude that famine wants you to have. One of those attitudes is selfishness, is stinginess. Because when there's scarcity, you want to keep what you have. You don't want to spare for others. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. So, before the times of famine... There are things we must know. Are you following me? There are things we must learn that will make up our genetic structure. Amen. And build us into the kind of man that God wants us to be that the times of famine cannot change. Are you following me? Most people are changed by the times of famine. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? Some people become, some people are generous, but when there's famine, they become stingy. Now, actually, they were not generous. Famine reveals actually the kind of man you are. Are you following me? The kind of man a man is, is revealed in the days of adversity. Are you following me, my friends? Adversity is a revelation 
of the nature of a man. Are you following me? Are you following me? Adversity is what? Is a revealer. Are you following me? Adversity is a revealer of the nature of a man. Of the kind of person that a man is. So if you see a man who is so generous right now, and, and famine begins, scarcity begins, the man turns selfish. No, 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 no. He was never generous. Are you following me? His real person, his real nature has been revealed by the adversity of famine. Amen. So famine comes to test, adversity comes to test and reveal who we really are. So that is why before the days of famine, before the days of adversity, God begins to introduce us to his will, are you following me, primarily, so as to build us into the kind of person he wants. So that even when famine comes, the man that will be revealed in the times of famine and the days of adversity is a man that is like God. Are you following me? Is a man that is what? Like God. Is a man that is God-like. A man that is God-like in nature. Are you following me? Are you following my friends? A man that is what? God-like in nature. Are you following me? That when adversity comes, when famine comes, because the Lord has prepared you, he has changed you ahead, famine or abundance do not define your nature. Are you following me? So that in the times of abundance or in the times of famine, your nature stays the same. You, you keep and remain and, and what? And retain the God nature. Are you following my friends? And this is what Paul meant by saying, I've learned how to abound and abase. Are you following me? So whether it is abasing or abounding, there's no difference to me. My nature stays the same. Some of us, our nature changes with the changes, with the, with the seasons of the earth. As we go through stores, our nature changes. As things happen to us, we are changing. You become wicked, you become, you become selfish, you become envious, you become, you can't change with times. Our na- we have to have a constant nature. You can't be depressed. Hey, are you following me? How do we hear those things say a Christian is depressed? What happened? Is nature, are you following me? It only have a constant nature. You can't be joyful today and be sorrowful tomorrow as a Christian. The Bible says rejoice always. Are you following me? The nature of the Christian man must be constant. Are you following me? The Christian man must do what? Have a constant nature. Your nature cannot change with situations. Your nature must not change with situations. Are you following me? What did I say? The Christian man must have a constant nature. His nature must not change with situations. He said rejoice always. How often should you rejoice? Always. They pay one billion dollars into your account. What should you do? You lost ten billion dollars. What should you do? But will you rejoice actually? You following me? So God is building us up. I'm trying to show you that verse 10, we, see, we saw famine. Are you following me? And we saw Abraham's response. But God had been trying to build Abraham, Abraham, Abraham up and build him up as a man that has an unchanging nature. That famine will not find another kind of man in him. That famine will find a man that is God-like in nature. Rejoice always. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. I've learned how to abound, I've learned how to and abase. In season and out of season, what should you do? He says you what? Do the Lord, do the Lord's work, do the Lord's work, right? Paul was speaking to Timothy. People don't know your scripture. In season and, in, in season and out of season, you should do what? Do the Lord's work. You should do what? Preach the gospel. Uh-huh. So in season and what? Out of season, do what? Preach the gospel. Are you following me? That, that means that the, for you, the preaching of the gospel is not gospel, is not season dependent. Do you know the meaning of that? That you don't preach the gospel when you are happy. And that when you become sad, when things are not going, you stop preaching. 
And the meaning of that is that what you have a constant nature that is not season dependent. In season and out of season, preach the gospel. Do you understand? Because the nature of this of the Christian man must not be controlled by seasons. Are you following me? Are you with me? The nature of what? The Christian man must not be controlled by seasons. If your nature, your response is controlled by season, you are a slave of time. You are under the bondage of Satan. Are you following me? Because Satan can change seasons. <laughs> Satan can do what? <laughs> he can change seasons. It's not only God that changes seasons. Satan can change seasons. Are you following me? Satan can change seasons. If Satan sees that your response that your nature is season dependent, he can make seasons work against you. Because he wants to see a strange man. Are you following me? Are you following me? The Christian man must do what? Have a constant nature. His nature must not change with seasons. Now look at me now. I said I was very tired. I've been very tired. When I finish, I'll go and I'll be very tired again. But right now, I can't be tired. Not because I'm not tired, but I've come out of tiredness. Imagine I said that there's no Bible study today, or there's Bible study, but I won't. We'll just come here and sing. You now tell me why. You say, I'm very tired. Are we okay? And it's not because I'm the pastor, because I'm a Christian that has sense. Because some of you want to leave your responsibility because you are tired. It can't be like that. It can't be like that. Are you following me? The same demand on the pastor is the same demand on what? On the usher. Why? They are both Christians. And they both have the same nature, the nature of God. So if you have the nature of God as, the usher, as an usher, and have the nature of God as a pastor, why should I give more commitment than you? It's not the same nature we are carrying. So, what must not change about us is that nature it must be constant. The God nature must be constant with us, and God keeps taking us through processes, keeps building us until he finds a man that has a constant nature. A man that whether there's abundance or there's famine, his nature remains the same. Abundance or famine does not describe him. He is described by the God life. Are you following me? A true man is a man who is not what? Defined by what? Abundance of, of famine. Is a man who is defined by the God life. In another way, a true man a Christian, are you following me? Is the man who is not defined by seasons. Is the man who is not defined by situations. Is the man who is defined by the God life. You can't be, you can't, you can't say, hey, why are you so sad? Why are you just sad everywhere? Say, hey, I'm looking for a job. I've not found a job. I'm looking for a wife. I can't, I've not found a wife. Look at, oh, what? So what? Are you the first to not find a husband? Before you came to the world, people have been looking for a husband. They died without a husband. After you go, people will still die without husband. People will die without wife. People will die without job. Are you the first? You are now so sad. You are bring, your sadness is, 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 is con, contagious. What was that one? Contagious. Thank you. You are old boy. Bro. <laughs> you know that people, that their sadness can make you sad. You can't be that kind of Christian. Oh my Jesus. Jesus Christ are the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is what stability. The Christian man must be stable. Are you following me? Oh my Jesus. The Christian man must be what? Stable. The Christian man must be stable. The Christian man must be stable. The Christian man was stable. Any excuse that pastor would give for not being in church or for not carrying out his respons- responsibility and you say, ah, uh, ah, uh, pastor, I can you give that kind of excuse. You also have no right to give it. Are you following me? Are you with me? Any excuse that pastor would give for not coming to church or for not doing what's his responsibility, for not doing what's supposed to do. Are you following me? 
that'll make you say, ah, ah, even though you don't say it out. Ah, ah, pastor. Is that why he didn't come to you? Is that why? Ah, that was not an excuse. You also don't have a right to give it. Are you following me? Because what, what are we looking at? We are not looking at pastor or usher or drama. What are we looking at? Nature. The God life. And do I have an, do I have an higher nature than you? Do I have more eternal life than you? Do I have an higher level of eternal life than you? How many levels of eternal life do we have? Is one. Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. As your problem, I have problems. <laughs> I have, you think, are you following me? Men of God have problems. The same problems you have. Are you following me? Are you following me? And the truth is, if you don't learn this nature thing, this stability thing, even though you're a pastor, you'll mess up. You'll be changing with, with situations. So, you are not stable because you're a pastor. Are you following me? You are stable because you are a Christian who has learned stability. If you don't learn stability and you become a pastor, situations will change you. You don't come to church because you are tired as a pastor. You tell the head usher to go and take the service. Say so you are too tired that for three days you've been stressed. So let the usher just go and take the service. You won't come to church. You won't come. You take one week break. <laughs> one week. Are you following my friends? Are you with me? Jesus Christ, what? The same yesterday, today, and forever. Stability. So famine, the seasons of famine, the seasons of adversity would reveal whether or not you are stable. Are you following me? Are you with me? The seasons of what? Of famine or the seasons of adversity would reveal whether or not you are what? You are stable. You can't be angry with your wife because there's no money in the house. You can't be angry. You can't be carrying bone face everywhere because there's no more, because there's no food in the house. Everybody cannot, ah, eh, oh, team boy, everybody, can, everybody cannot be running and hide inside the room because you are angry, because there's no food, because of your countenance. But when there's money, hey guys, hey, you are a stupid man. <laughs> but when there's no money, you're like a lion. Everybody has to run away. Because any small thing, they hold remote, you need the, the remote feather. You <laughs> live <laughs> oh my Jesus. May God teach our hearts to be stable. So God began to introduce Abraham to the things that will make him stable. Are you following me? And he started with what? His will. His what? His will. The will of God. Hmm. Because the man that is the man that can do the will of God at every point in time is the most stable man. <laughs> you follow me? If you, can come, if you can do the will of God at every point in time, you are very stable. Because stability is found where? In the will of God. That's where stability is. Are you follow me? So, we are considering some things that Abraham went through before famine. Because those things will instruct our heart on what God is really looking for. Because I told you that actually, in the times of famine, God is looking for the, a kind of man, the kind of man that we are. And that famine also comes to show what manner of man are you? What kind of person are you? Amen. So look at again Genesis chapter 12. Praise Jesus. Genesis chapter 12 from verse... Let's just read one and three. One to three. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house, unto the land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and that shall be a blessing. And I will, and I will bless them that bless thee, and cause him that cursed thee. And in this shall all the, all the families of the head be blessed. Then if you look at verse 10, there was great famine in the land, blah, blah, blah. So last week Thursday we saw that in verse 1, Abraham did what? Received the will of God. 
Efrolemi. That is always the starting point. Praise Jesus forevermore. In verse 1, Abraham did what? Received the will of God. Because that is the most important thing. And that is always stabilize you in the seasons of in the days of adversity. Amen. Praise Jesus. So, before famine showed its ugly head, before the days of adversity came, God had begun to do a work in Abraham's heart. Amen. God had begun to introduce Abraham to his will and to do a work in his heart. Are you following me? And I told you that God always gives us his will before he gives us his promises. Right? And why is that? Because the will of God is to change us. It is to change our being. Are you following me? So in verse 1, Abraham received the will of God. In verse 2 and 3, he received the promise of God. The promises of God. But God, but God first showed Abraham his will. First gave Abraham his will before his promises. Because his will is paramount. Because we must be used to pleasing God. We must be used to making God happy. And I said, God does this did this to Abraham and does this to all of his children, anyone that desires to walk with him to show you that your happiness is not the first thing in this world. That the first thing in this world is what? The happiness of God. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? So God begins to give you instruction, give you commandments, show you his will, to show you that what? Your happiness is not what? The first thing in this world. It is God's own happiness. And now is God happy when we do his will. Praise Jesus forevermore. And we saw from scriptures, and I, I, I explained last week, that God's will changes our person, changes our being, changes our nature. Praise Jesus forevermore. But it's very, very interesting to see verse 2 and 3. Look at verse 2 and 3 again. Praise Jesus. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy fathers unto the land that I will shield thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and I shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee. And in this shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Amen. Are we ready now? Praise Jesus. So, God gave Abraham his will in verse 1, and gave him what in verse 2 and 3, his promises. So, why did God, why would God show Abraham his will and almost immediately begins to talk about a promise? Are you following me? Praise Jesus. God showed Abraham his will and almost in the same voice, in the same breath, he began to make promises to Abraham. Are you following me? Hmm. God gave Abraham his will, showed Abraham his will, gave Abraham his commandment. Are you following me? When the same bread began to make promises to Abraham. This is so beautiful. I told us last week that God's will makes God, happy, makes God happy, but God's promises are to make us happy. I hope I'll be able to really learn very well this evening. Well, just follow me carefully. Amen. Don't forget what God told Adam in Genesis chapter 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 2. Is it chapter 2? Quickly find it. Genesis chapter. Let's see. Is it chapter 2? Praise Jesus. Yeah. Chapter 2. Verse 16. Genesis 2, verse 16. Are we there? And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt what? Now, what did God tell Adam? He come, He gave him a command not to do what? Not to eat of that tree. Now, with that command came what? The repercussion for eating. For in the day you eat, you will surely die. Are you following me? So, what was God's will in talking to Adam? He should not eat the tree. That was the command. That's the instruction. That is his will. But with this, this one does not look like the one God told Abraham. Are you following me? For God has said to Abraham, God has commanded Abraham to get out. But with the same bread, he said, I will bless. Now began to make promises to Abraham. Are you following me? God gave Adam a command, his will. But there were no promises. I'm going somewhere. It's not every time that God shows us his will that he, always, he also makes promises to us. Are you following me? I want us to learn something tonight. Are you with me? It's not what? It's not every time that God what? Shows us his will that he also does what? Makes promises to us. No. He doesn't want our hearts to be trained that way. Hmm? It's like me saying, Oyeka, go and me wash my clothes. But let, let me say it like a command. Oyeka, go and wash as an instruction, as a command. Did I go and help me? I've already put help. It has spoiled the instruction. It has spoiled the command. So Oyeka, go and wash my clothes. Amen. Now, if I say, Oyeka, go and wash my clothes, and I'll give you 5,000 euros. Are you following me? Now, I gave her an instruction, a command. I showed her my will. I also gave her what? A promise of 500 naira. Because what I'll do for her, the promise, what I would do for her when she washes the clothes or if she washes the clothes. Now, when you can go and wash my clothes, I'll give you 5,000 naira. If when you can go to wash that clothes, are you following me? I can't really prove that she's obedient. Do you understand? Are you, are you following me? Can, can, I really, can I really prove that she's obedient? I can't really prove that she's obedient. Can I really prove that she's obedient? I can't really prove, right? Because the motivation for washing the clothes can be the 5,000 error. But when I say, oh yeah, can I go and wash the clothes? And that's the end. And she goes to wash the clothes. And I, and I keep saying that 100 times. And every time I say, she goes to wash the clothes. Can I prove that she's obedient? Yes, because there are no promises. She's just obeying my voice, obeying my will. Are you following me? Now, if I start with that, oh, you can go and wash my clothes, I'll give you 500 naira, and I keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. The day I say, oh, you can go and wash my clothes, and there's no promise there to be hard for her. Are you following me? If God always attaches his commandments, are you following me? Or if God always attaches promises to his commandment to us, are, are you following me? Our hearts will not really learn to love the voice of God, to love his will. Are you following me? We'll be motivated by what? By his promises. But I'm going to but his promises too are good, and you, you understand it this evening. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. So the command, so I'm showing us two instances. God did not make any promise to Adam. He said, he even showed him the repercussion of, if you eat, you will die. <laughs> because his, his command, his will, don't always come with a promise. And your heart must love it. Are you following me? Whether the command of the Lord, whether the will of the Lord comes with a promise or not, your, your heart must what? Must love it. Your heart must do what? Love it. Go and stay in Adoekiti and I'll give you $10 billion. Who will not want to stay in Adoekiti? With $10 billion, I'll turn Adoekiti to America. <laughs> the place I want to stay. I can turn it to anywhere I like in the world. So who not want to stay in Adoekiti? But go and stay. But just go and stay in Adoekiti. You don't want to go. And God is trained now to follow him 
by loving his will. To love his will and follow him. Are you following me? I'm going somewhere. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse, verse 1 to, verse 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother. Bracket. <laughs> What's in that bracket? Which is the first commandment with what? With promise. Which is the what? First commandment with what? That means there are many, what, what, what do you infer from this statement? There are many other commandments that also have what? Promise. But there are also commandments that don't have what? Promise. Do you understand? Which is the first commandment with what? With promise, with a promise. So that means there are also commandments, there are many commandments that also have promises, but in the same vein, there are commandments that don't do what? Have promise. Guys, are you following me? Hey, guys, are you following me? So, the commandment of God can come with a promise and it can also come without a promise. Are you with my friends? Are you following me? Are you following me? What did I say? The commandments of God can come with a promise. It can also come without what? With a promise. But however it comes, your heart must love the commandment of God. Are you following me? However it comes, your heart must love the will of God. Praise Jesus. We just want to command the promise that this may be long and that that may just live long on the earth. That, let me read it. That they be well with you and that that may just live long on the head. That's the promise. If you check out that translation, that's the promise. It will be well with you and you will live long on it. Are you, are you following me? So God attached that promise to the command of honor your, your father and your mother. Amen. So it means that there are some commandments that God will give you. There are some instructions that God will give you. There's a path that God will show you to walk in his will and there's no single promise attached to it. Hmm. Are you following me? That if you do, if you obey that commandment, are you following me? Five naira will not enter your pocket. But something will happen to you. What will happen to you? You will change. Do you understand? Do you understand? Hear me well. Which is the first commandment with a promise. That means there are commandments, other commandments that have promise also. But there are also commandments that don't have promise. And however God's commandment comes, whether with a promise or without a promise, you must love it. There are some commands that God will give you that don't have a promise. That when you do them, are you following me? One error will not enter your pocket. Nothing physical, nothing material. Nothing to make you happy. Are you following me? Are you following me? That the only thing you get from there is change. Are you following me? Because God, whenever you do the will of God, you are doing what? You are changing. Are you with me? What did I say? Whenever you do the will of God, you are doing what? You are changing. Can I hear you say it? Say, whenever I do the will of God, I am changing. So, look at it. So, God gives us commandments sometimes. They don't have a promise. Because what promise does, don't worry, just hold me carefully, is for our happiness. But the command when we obey is for our change. It changes us. So, this shows that God's first interest is our change. Are you following me? This shows that the first interest of God is our transformation. Are you following me? Because it is not every... Oh, my friends, are you following me? It is every time he gives us a command, but it's not every time he attaches a promise to it. Are you following me? Promise without a command. Promise with a command. What is constant there? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm sorry, I used promise twice. Command without a promise 
and command with a promise. What is constant? Command. Are you following me? So, his will must be the constant of our life. Are you following me? His command, his instruction must be the constant of our life. Now, whether there's promise or there's no promise, we are just living in the Lord's command because that is what gives in the light. Oh my God. And what we are going to reap from his command is the harvest of a transformed life. Are you following me? Are you following me? Whenever we follow the will of God, whenever we follow the commandment of God, we reap an harvest of a transformed life. And that is the highest goal of God. Are you following me? Are you with me? Whenever we do what? We follow the commandment of God. Whenever we follow the will of God, we reap and harvest of a transformed life. So that is why command we keep coming, is will we keep coming, is instruction we keep, we keep coming. Sometimes there will be promise, sometimes there will, there will not be promise, but the constant thing is the will of God, is his voice, his command. Are, are you going to follow it? Because his highest interest is your change, is your transformation into his person, is that you remain a constant person, a God person, a God-like person. Praise Jesus evermore. But I really plan to really bless us and show us God's heart on these things fully. Paul was speaking in Acts. said, I did not shun from revealing to you the whole counsel of God. Amen. So even though I've said this, for God to also give command, give instruction, show us his will, and immediately give us promises, it must be very important in his heart. Also. Are you with me? Are you following me? For God to... Now, look at that Ephesians again. Which is the first commandment which promise. That may be well with it, blah, blah, blah. So God gave that commandment now attach the promise. And he spoke, go back to Abraham... Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will shew thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless them and will make their name great, and that shall be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and cause them that curse thee, and in this shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now, it's the same sentence. Are you following me? In the same sentence, in the same breath, God gave Abraham a command. God showed Abraham his will and at the same time gave Abraham promises. Amen. And the way the statement reads is as though God was saying, Abraham, if you do my will, this is what I will give you. Are you following me? Oh my Jesus. You must know that this God plans to make you happy. You know, I've been, I've been putting it in your heart. Your goal in this world is not to be what? It's not to be happy. But this God plans to make you happy. They, are, they, they, they don't mean the same thing. Are you following me? See, see, see. God did not design you to seek your own happiness. Are you following me? Your happiness is for God to seek. How can you, can you make yourself happy? You think it's by eating suya and by watching comedy that you're happy? Happy is that man. Are you following me? You can't make yourself happy. The more you try to make yourself happy, the more you get depressed. The more you see inadequacies, the more you see things that are not working. God did not design us to make ourselves happy. Can I talk to you? God designed us to make him happy. And God plans to make us happy. Your happiness is the responsibility of God. Oh my Jesus. Friends, are you following me? Your happiness is what? Is the responsibility of God. <laughs> And if God can take your happiness as his responsibility, 
it means that he wants you to be happy. The problem is not that God does not want you to be happy. Are you following me? The problem is not that you are desiring happiness. The problem is that you are designed to make yourself happy. You are trying to make yourself happy. Are you following me? When God created Adam, when he created man, the Bible says he planted a garden eastward in Eden and put man there. Eden means pleasure. So, when it comes to pleasure, it was God that put man inside the garden of pleasure. Are you following me? You cannot enter pleasure, you can't enter happiness unless God puts you there by himself. Stop stressing yourself. Well, God took the man he had made and placed him in the garden. And the garden was planted eastward in Eden. The name of the location where the garden was is Eden. Pleasure, delight. So the delight of man, the happiness of man, the pleasure of man is the responsibility of God. Hmm. Oh my Jesus. I hope you are not just enjoying these teachings. I hope these things will be in your heart. I hope you live by these things. What did I say? The happiness of man, the pleasure of man, are you following me? Is what? Is the responsibility of God. And we saw it in the first man. He made the garden, put him dead. Guys, God has to put you inside happiness. So. God has to do what? God has to do what? Put inside happiness. So. The reason why you are very inside because you are seeking happiness by yourself. You are just trying to make yourself happy. You are looking for every opportunity. You are looking for the job, looking for the car, looking for the house, looking for the wife by yourself. You, are, you want to kill yourself. Come unto me, all you that what? The labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Rest is only God can give rest. I'll give you happiness. I'll give you pleasure. He put the man in the garden of pleasure. Guys, your happiness is not in your hand though. Can you say my happiness is not in my hand? There's only one happiness in your hand. And whose happiness? The happiness of God. Are you following me? Are you following me? God put his what? His happiness in your hand. Are you following me? So that as you do his will, he's pleased, he's happy. But your own happiness, the happiness for your own life, is where? In God's hand. So, if God has made your happiness his responsibility, that means that your happiness is very, is very what? Important to God. Guys, my happiness is important to God. I mean, I have known it. I have known it. I, have been, I, have, I know it. Practically. I know this God wants me to be happy. I have prayer lists. I have things that I've listed that God, I need this, I need that. I don't point. I've been marking them as I've been answering them. He wants me to be happy. Are you following me? He wants me to be happy. I've marked answer prayers. I have like, like seven or eight prayer points. So I've been praying since last year. I've marked like four or five now. I've marked like four or five. He wants me to be happy. Are you following me? All I, and how do I, see, I want to be happy. And I'm sure I want him to be happy. Guys, one thing you must know, even though I've told you not to seek your own happiness, you have to know that what? God wants you to be happy. Can you say God wants me to be happy? Guys, you have to be sure, otherwise you enter depression. Otherwise, Satan will deceive your heart. Can you say God wants me to be happy? He wants you to be happy. But your happiness is his responsibility. So, I place the things that will make me happy and comfortable before God, and I keep praying to him. But I don't set my heart on them and want to keep myself together. I keep doing what he asks me to do. I keep trying to make him happy. Because I know he will make me happy. Because he plans to make me happy. Are you following me? So the problem is not that you are seeking happiness. The problem is that you are seeking happiness by yourself. Are you following me? You are seeking happiness how? By yourself. You must allow God to seek your happiness. So, oh, friends, do you understand what I'm talking to you about? When you are seeking your own happiness, you are telling God to answer. That like you can do it by yourself. Cast all your cares upon him. Are you following me? 
for he cares for you. Cast all your burdens, all your care upon him. Why? He cares. How many of your bodies should you cast on him? Some of us cast 5%. We want to carry the main 95%. And say you, and say you won't enter depression. You say you won't be sorrowful. You say you won't be sad. You say cast on your cares. Cast on your cares. Your cares is his res- responsibility. He didn't say some. All, all your cares. As long as you keep trying to carry your own burden, trying to make yourself happy, you will be sad. You will enter depression. If you are not careful very soon, you will, you will commit suicide. You will commit suicide. There are some times, I look at things I go through, you understand? Of course, things are really getting better now. Are you following me? Sometimes, I, I don't feel too good about it. But I've not entered a state of sad sorrow. You know, is this, I've not entered that sorrow. I've not. If I don't feel bad, I'll go back to him again and pray. and talk to him, God, see, see. I've not entered sorrow. I've not, I've not been, how do I put it? You think I'm lying? I've not been sorrowful about my needs, about my life. I've not been sorrowful. There are times I've felt tired. You need to understand what I'm saying. There are times I've felt tired. I've never felt like giving up. There are times I felt tired. There are times I felt weak. But they make me go back to the one who is responsible for my what? For my happiness. I've never entered sorrow. As I'm sorrowful. Because I've not had it. I've not, this has not come. This has not come. This has not come. I'm now sad. How? Oh, am, I, am I in charge of my own life? Am I in charge of my own life? Are you following me? Because that's how to live. Your happiness is God's responsibility. Are you following me? And how does he make you happy? Promises. His promises. His command makes him, makes him happy. His promises make you happy. But what is constant is his own what? Happiness. Is his will. So that's why, whether there's promise or not, he gives his will. Because he has to show you that he has to be number one. He has to be proto. He's the first. Are you following me? I'm trying to show us something. So, why would God speak to Abraham, give him a commandment, show him his will, and immediately he gives him promises? This is beautiful. And this, this happens to some of many of us. It happens to me. Are you following me? It happens. Are you following me? God showed Abraham his will and immediately he gave him promises. How many of you has God asked you to do something for him, the future, your destiny, and in the same breath, he's telling you how he will make you great, how he will bless you. How many of you have had that experience with God? You understand? He does it. I'll show you why. <laughs> Are you following me? And if he does it, and he knows when to do it, and he knows why he does it. It means it is important when he does it. Do you understand? <laughs> if God gives his command, if God gives his will and instruction, he also gives promises with it. Are you following me? And he knows when he does it, why he does it, how he does it. It means it is important to his heart to do it like that whenever he does it like that. I need to know why he does it like that. Are you following me? Because he knows our frame. And he's not trained by battle. He's not trained by battle. Because at the end of the day, even with the command and the promise together, he's not looking for a person. He's not looking for a nature. He's not trained by battle. He's not, are you following me? Don't, it's not like me telling Oyeka to wash clothes and I'll give her money. It's not, it's higher than that. The end of everything that is seeking a person. Oh my Jesus. Ah! Oh my Jesus. Don't worry, it's a series. Oh my Jesus. When I give his command without a promise, or he gives me his command with a promise, he's seeking what? A person. He's seeking a person. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. Whether his command comes with a, with a, with a promise or without a promise, what, what's the end goal? He's seeking what? A person. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, whenever he brings his command without a promise, 
That means that is the best thing for him to do at that time. He knows why he does it that way. And whenever he brings with a promise, that is the best thing for him to do at that time. And he knows why he does it that way. But the end product is what? A person. Are you following me? Now, God knows the frame of our heart. He knows us. He knows who we are. He knows our person. He knows our being. He knows where we are coming from. He knows our frailty. He knows our weaknesses. He knows where we are. If we, even our walk with him, he knows. Can you say God knows where I am? Guys, this must make you happy. Can you say God knows where I am? Oh, my Jesus. Guys, don't pressure yourself too much. I'm not, I'm not saying you should, you should not desire change. Are you following me? I'm not saying you should not desire transformation. But don't put too much pressure on yourself. God knows where you are. I know how to relate with you and deal with you where you are. You don't have to come to where I am before God relates with you. You can be where you are and God is, God is relating with you until it takes to where he wants to be. Are you following me? Are you following me? You can't copy another man's experience with God. You can't copy another man's encounter. He knows exactly where you are. He knows your struggles. He knows the command he can give you and the command he can give me. Are you following me? There are commands that God will give you that you will obey, that if he gives me, I won't obey. He won't come and give me. Because the purpose, the purpose, the purpose of command is to change us. So he will give me, he will talk to me, he will, he will come to me in a way that will change me. Oh, guys, you need to be glad that God knows where you are. Guys, God knows where I am. This takes away every pressure from you. I'm not saying you are, you are comfortable to be a, a, a useless person. Are you following me? But that you are comfortable in allowing God who is working you. <laughs> are you following me? But that what? You are comfortable in doing what? In allowing God do his work in you. What is the key word here? Allowing God do his work. Wherever you are, you must be what? Allowing God to do his work. If you stop allowing God to do his work, you'll be a useless person. Are you following me? God is not angry about where you are. He's not surprised. Don't be angry with yourself. You only become a useless person when you stop allowing God to do his work in you. So wherever you are, just keep allowing God. Can you say allowing God? Can you say allowing God? This takes away every pressure from the Christian man. It shows that God can work with you wherever you are and can change you wherever you are as long as you allow him. So you don't need, you don't need to, to be where I am before you can transact with God. You can be where you are and you are transacting with God. But you are aligning. Take away pressure. He knows our frailty. He knows our condition. He knows what, he knows where he picked us from. He knows. He knows the things we struggled with. He knows where he came to pick us from. He picked Abraham from, from Mesopotamia. Oh my Jesus. I wish I could show you the book of, the book of Acts of Apostles. They were worshipping idols. Are you following me? You picked a man, an idol worshipper. Not that Abraham was in a city where they were worshipping idols. Abraham was in, himself what? And have you read that place in Acts before? He was not just in a city where they were worshipping idols. He was an idol worshipper. Worshipper. That's what, that's what they did in their city and in his family. You are not picking that man. You want to install faith in him. Oh God, you are not wicked. And he's not wicked. He knows where he's picking him from. Guys, relax. God knows where you are. And he knows what to do. But whenever he comes to do what, what he wants to do, allow him to do it. Are you following me? God knows what he needs to change you. He knows where to meet you. But whenever he comes, what should you do? Allow him. If you don't allow him, you'll be useless. You die where you are. So God knew where he picked Abraham from. He gave him his will. But where, no matter where God picks you from, no matter where you are, God still makes you, makes you to understand and know and agree that my will is the first. <laughs> this is a very, very important revelation. Are you following me? No matter where you are, where God picked you from, anything, God still shows you that what? His will is number one. So he told Abraham, come out. It's my will first before promise. So no matter where you are, don't be deceived. You think that you can neglect the will of God. Though. No matter where you are, God's will is number one. You are not exempted from the will of God. No matter the state you are spiritually, it is this God's will. Because that's what will still change you. 
Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So God gave his will to Abraham and he gave him his promises immediately and he does this to us many times. And it's consistent with scriptures. He said this is the first commandment with promise. Are you following me? That means there are, there are still many commandments that, those, that also have promises. And we saw one of those with Abraham. Of course, when he said this first commandment with promise, we're talking about the ten commandments and all of that. You understand? But it shows that there are there is, 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 we can prove from there and we've seen the level of Abraham and from personal, our personal lives that there are sometimes that God comes to us, brings his command, also gives promises. Are you following me? Praise Jesus. So my interest is, why does God do this? We need to understand these things. Why would God, after telling Abraham to do his will, to follow his will, giving Abraham his command, why would he at the same time give him his promise? Now look at it. You need to understand that following God's will is not easy. Are you following me? It's not what? It's not easy. Our heart can shake following His will. <laughs> God, 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 God has talked to me about ministry many years ago, even when, even when I was in university. Even when we finished school set, look for a job, 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 job. Ministry, ministry was not doing. He's still telling us that we are going to, to the nations, we are going here. Ministry, the me has not come. I want to talk of the ministry. He has been talking of nation, talking of oh, what? No, no whiny. <laughs> and he keeps saying that over and over. That this is what you should do. Follow my will. And he says that he reminds us of his promises. He reminds me. He brings another promise. And most of the time when God has promised you, eh, he doesn't promise you something new again. He keeps reminding you of his promises. Is that not true? Most God does not promise us something new. He just reminds us of his promise. Do you understand? And watch it. Oh, friends, are you with me? And most times, when God reminds us of his promises again, most times there are the times when our heart wants to shake from his will. Friends, are you with me? I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Most times God does not bring new promises. There are the promises he had used to trick you to go out of your father's house. The same promises. Trick positively. Not negatively. Are you following me? The promises are used to lure you out of your country. They say, because if you go back, if you see Abraham's encounter, you'll see the mind dream. <laughs> when he met Isaac and Jacob, it's the same promise to their father that he still reminded them of. Are you following me? Hey, my Jesus. I know what I'm teaching and I'm teaching my I'm teaching from, from my person. I'm not just teaching. I'm, not, I'm teaching the scripture. Do you understand? But I'm also teaching a life. I know what I'm teaching and I can feel it. So most times God does not come to give us new promises. He comes to remind us of what? Of his promises. Of the promises that he used to set us up on the journey of his will. Are you following me? He comes to do what? To remind us of the promises that he used to do what? To set us up on the journey of his will. The promise he used to lead us out from our country, our kindred, and our father's house. He comes to remind us. And whenever he comes, most times if you watch it, when God comes to start reminding you of his promises, most times there are times when your heart wants to start shaking from his will. When your heart wants to start walking away from part of his will, he comes back to promise. He comes back to remind you of the promises. And when he reminds you, what happens to you? You are strengthened again to what? To follow his will. Does this happen to you? Am I, am I, does this happen to you? Hey. So sometimes our heart is weary in following the will of God. And he's not angry. That was why I gave you the promise in the first place. <laughs> you will see it. Are you following me? Our heart is weary. It's as if we can't hold it anymore. It's as if we can't continue in this wheel. God, where will this wheel eh? Which wheel? Which wheel? Which wheel? Take your wheel away. Give me wheel. Give me wheel of a car. <laughs> which one is this wheel that you are talking about? I don't want this wheel. I want four wheels. This wheel is too hard. Give me four wheels. Amen. 
So Moses, our heart is strained. It has been strained. It has been stretched. We are stressed because of that will. Most of we feel like giving up. Most of we feel like not continuing. So he comes back to do what? Reminds us of what? It doesn't remind us of, of his will. Because we know the will. The will is with us. But we can forget his promises. <laughs> are, you follow, are you following me? We can do what? We don't forget the will of God. We, we don't forget it. We don't. Because he's facing you every day. He's facing, you, don't for, you, you can never forget God's will. He's facing, if you do as if you forget, you didn't forget. That will, will. Ah. Is it, is it carry your cross daily? Is your cross, it has the, attached, attached it to your neck. You can't separate from it. Will. Hmm. May, may God put, put his will upon your life. <laughs> he said, tie it upon your door. Tie it upon your chest. Tie it. That's the meaning. That they, he said they should tie the command. They should, they should tie it everywhere. On bracelet, they should put it on the chest. You will, you will die with this will. <laughs> this will. You can't escape. So we, can't, we don't forget the will of God. But we do what? We forget the promises of God. Is that not true? We forget. We forget. So when God comes, and our heart becomes weary because of his will. And see, see, if this happens to you, don't feel bad. It's part of the process, part of the journey. Doesn't mean you're no longer spiritual. Are you following me? Doesn't mean you're no longer what? Are you spiritual than Jesus? Are you spiritual than Jesus? You know, okay, that the Bible says, I've come to do thy will, oh God. <laughs> when in our face, you real thing that, <laughs> that the place where we do the will, where we lay down his soul, his spirit, he said, ah, Father, if this cup could pass over me. Is, is that not in the Bible? Is it me that wrote it? He, he said, he took his, he's able to pray. He said, my soul is crushed to death. The Bible says he began to be sorrowful. Is that not true? He began to be what? Why was he sorrowful? Do you think he was sorrowful because, because of the sins of the world? He was sorrowful because he saw what he wanted to go and do. He saw the will of God. Baba, now imagine you want to put on top of me with this. Ah, you want to crush me. Are you following me? And from the mouth of Jesus, the Bible said, when that I said, I come to do thy will, O God. <laughs> ah, this will of God, eh? When the first time showing you, you think you're a boss. God, eh, we'll go. Do the nations, we go. We run now, we run now. We run now, we run now. I come to do, I come to do thy will, O God. According as it's written of me in the volume of books. We go, we go. Hmm. When you get to guess him, when you get to guess him, you see the will. You, you begin to be sorrowful. Can I help you? When you are in the path of God's will and begin to notice sorrow, though you are no longer spiritual, it happened to Jesus. When you feel that your soul is getting crushed within you, don't feel, don't feel that you are no longer spiritual. Don't feel that you are bastarded. It happened to Jesus. Are you following me? Are you following me? When you feel that, let this cup pass over me, Lord, I don't want to do this will again. Don't feel that you're no longer spiritual. Are you following me? What? Where am I going? You are not spiritual than Jesus. Jesus got to a point where he wished that he should no longer do God's will. Are you following me? Am I still teaching the Bible? You've read it before. I think we should open it. You have time. You want, you want me to show you? You know it. He felt like not doing God's will. And he said it with his mind. He didn't hide it. And God, he wants us to know. He made sure they wrote it in the Bible. They recorded it. Because he knows that we are also human and we are frail. Because we do not have an high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. There was the point he felt like dropping the will of God. And he said it. He said, if this cup could pass over me. But what did he say? Nevertheless. Not as I wish, but as you will. So what was his own will? That the cup should go. For him not to do God's will. But if, eventually what did he do? He surrendered what? His will. To the will of God. Now watch this. Don't feel carnal or bastarding when you find yourself getting weary in doing God's will. But don't miss something. Don't just look at Jesus. Don't just, the things you pick up from that scripture, don't just that Jesus who fell to give first weary. 
So what happened to him eventually? Did he drop the wheel? You must learn to have honest and sincere conversations with God. Are you following me? Are you following me? You must learn to do what? Honest and sincere conversation with God and trusted believers. Because he also spoke to his disciples. He said, my soul is crushed. He told him, my soul is crushed. Watch. He said, watch. He said, pray for He said, watch for me or something. Right? He told them to watch for him. That they should stay here. That he wants to go and pray. When he came and asked, could you not watch with me? Guys, when your soul is becoming weary, because it will happen. I'm telling you what we, it happened to Jesus. It will happen to us at different points. That's why you need Christian friends. Don't have friends that is only party they can take you to. When this weariness comes, party can't save you. Party can't save you. These are the things that come to people that they're going to commit suicide. Asho, okay, cannot, cannot save your friends that is only out to choose Asho Ebi. Okay, there's a party. Let's choose Asho Ebi. Let's go and rock, rock the city. They can, you need Christian friends that can watch with you in your days of weakness. Every man will come to that day at different points. You need what? Christian friends. Christian brothers and sisters that can do what? Watch with you. So, don't feel backslidden. Don't feel unspiritual when you experience those moments. But there's a secret you must ensure that you keep having an honest and sincere word conversation with God and with like-minded believers. It will save you. You will escape. You will surrender your will. They will help you. They will help you. There are times I've escaped serious things by just picking up my phone to call a friend that this is what is going on. This is what this way I'm feeling this, this is what is happening. Just by that conversation and the friend's prayer. And I escape. And I talk to God. Are you following me? Are you following me? Are you following me? The only thing that will not make you do God's will when you feel weary is that you stopped having an honest and sincere conversation with God and genuine believers. Weariness in your heart in doing God's way is not, is not a problem. Is it a problem? Why did it happen to Jesus? It's not a problem. It's not the way not to stop you. Are you following me? That you felt weak to do God's will. That you felt weary to do God's will is not enough to stop you from doing God's will. What will stop you from doing God's will is that you stopped having honest and sincere conversation with God and genuine believers. Are you following me? Imagine that those times... Ministry, ministry, and ministry has not, me is not even showing up, not to, not to talk of ministry, not to talk of the ministry. And I felt like just going to, let me just travel to go and look for a job. And I kept to myself. Those were the, let's say those were the things in my heart. And I kept to myself. You understand? You know, you know that, 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 that was what I'll be trying to do until I travel out, travel out of God's way. But imagine that those periods, I kept talking to people about the way I'm feeling. Christian brothers and sisters, I'm talking to God. They are the one that will give me strength, strengthen me again, and instruct me until I come out of that phase of the struggle. Are you following my friends? Praise Jesus evermore. Shout hallelujah. So what is the solution to overcoming weariness in your heart in doing the will of God? Honest conversations with God and genuine believers. Honest and sincere conversations with God and genuine believers. Don't hide it. Jesus went through it. You can go through it. You will go through it. And you can come through it. Praise Jesus forevermore. So, what am I saying? So, God knows that there are moments in our lives where we feel like giving up. On his will. And like I said, those moments he comes to the world reminds us of his what? Of his promises. Is that not true? And when he does, what, what happens to us? What happens to us? He comes strengthened again. That means there's something about God's promises that strengthens our heart. 
Are you following me? There's something about what? God's promises are those what? Strengthen our heart. There's something about God's promises that what? Strengthen our heart in following his will. So, when your heart is strengthened again, when God reminds you of his promises, you want to follow his will again. You want to keep being part of his will. Are you following me? Because he reminded you of his promises. So, from promises, you now drill strength to do what? To follow his will. Are you ready, are you ready now? Are you, are you being blessed? Shout hallelujah. So, God promises us so our hearts can be assured in following his way. Are you following me? God does what? God promises us so that what? Our hearts can be what? Assured in what? In following his way. Do you understand that? Because when you, are, when, you want, when you feel like forsaking his will, when it comes to remind you of his promise, your heart is assured again. So from the beginning, he gave you his will and gave you his promise so that the promise will assure your heart in following his will. Friends, are you with me? Are you getting these things? Are you with me? Are you with me? See, let me not lie to you. One of the reasons why I keep following God's will in this ministry, follow this ministry, because he has promised me many things. <clears throat> and this time I remember, <laughs> we go do this thing, finish. Because the word he promised has not yet seen it. Are you following me? I'm not seeing it. And I know it, does, and I know it does not lie. I cannot lie. <laughs> Are you following me? I'm, we started seeing the traces. Small, small. Traces. Are you with me? I follow my friends. So God promises us that what? Our heart can be assured in following His will. Now, there are two different things. Your heart loving the will of God and your heart being assured in following His will, there are two different things. Whether there's promise or not, your heart must do what? Love the will of God. Are you with me? Are you with me? Whether what? There's promise or there's no promise, your heart must what? Love the will of God. But the work of God's promises in line with His will are what? They assure us. They assure our heart. In following his way. Amen. So, to assure Abraham's heart, a man who is an idol worshiper, we're not going to a journey of faith, to the journey of faith, to follow you, to the land you will show him. The man who has many lands, who is wealthy, he says you want to show him one land and he doesn't even know where the land is. You have to assure you this guy's heart. You have to assure his heart. Are you following me? You have to, you have to do what? Assure his heart. Are you following me? See, I don't, our vocabulary, the earth is falling and our voca- vocabulary is so falling. What I'm saying is not like you understand it in the realms of man, like I'm trying to ask, I don't know how to put it to you. But I know you have those by you, I know you understand these things. It's not, it's not like man trying to assure you. Don't it's, to, it's to assure our heart in following his will. Oh God. I don't know how well to put these things to you. Are you following me? So it's not like, it's not like if you do this, I'll do this for you. It's not just like that. It's to do a work upon our hearts. And don't worry, I'll still show you something. As we continue in that, in that story of Abraham. It's to do what? Do a work upon our heart. It's about our nature. Even God's promises is about our nature. It's about the person we are becoming. Don't worry, there's no need to rush. So God gives us his promises. Why? To assure our hearts in following his will. And he knows when we need such, a, such assurance and when we don't need it. So, times when God speaks to you about his will and also gives his promises, he knows that at that point, concerning that particular command, concerning that particular will, you need your heart to be assured through his will. I mean, through his promises. Are you following me? He knows that at that point, of course, loving his will should be enough. Are you following me? But know that at that point, you also need your heart to be assured in following his will. So he brings his promises. Are you following me? Don't let us lie. The reason why many of us are following God's will because of his promises. Is that not true? And it's not canal. Because if that follow, if you follow a finish, hey, hey, if you follow a finish, not only will you be blessed, you will change. You will do what? You will 
change. You will change. Hey, oh, you will change, yo. The will of God, the promise of God, they will change you. They will change you. If you are truly following, they will change you. I'm not saying follow by trade, in, in the sense of trade, I'm to trade by battle. Are you following me? I'm not saying following in the sense of transaction now. Ah, I don't want to jump ahead of myself. I'm trying to take my time. Praise Jesus forevermore. So God gives us His promises in addition to His commandment so that what? Our hearts can be assured in following His will. Look at Isaiah chapter. I'll look at I'll look at, let me look at it. I'll look at three scriptures and we'll just close. And we'll continue this conversation next week Thursday by God's grace. Look at Isaiah chapter 45 from verse 18 to 19. And I'll read it in Amplified. Isaiah 45 from verse 18 to 19. I'll read in Amplified translation. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Isaiah 45 verse 18 to 19. Amen. For thus said, I'm reading Amplified. <laughs> For thus said the Lord who created the heavens, God himself who formed the earth and made it, who established it and did not create it to be a worthless waste, he formed it to be inhabited and the Lord and there's no one else. Look at verse 19, very, very interesting. Look at verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in the corner of the land of darkness. Amen. I did not call the descendants of Jacob to what? To a fruitless service. That's an amplifier. To a what? To a fruitless what? Service. So he called them to service, right? But he said that their service to him will, what? will bear fruit. Now this fruit is not the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> you understand? It's what they will gain. And you will see it clearly. Are you following my friends? Guys, can I help you? See, I pray you will not take these teachings with a carnal mindset. Because these are teachings of the scripture. There is gain for you in doing the will of God. Are you with me? Are you with me? See, I know what I'm talking about and I'm not... See, my own mind is not carnal. I pray your heart will not be carnal in this, in this thing. In the way you are understanding it. Are you following me? I have to teach you the whole counsel of God. There is what... There is gain for you in what? In doing the will of God. There's material gain. There's gain for your health. There's gain for prosperity. There's gain for you in doing the will of God. Are you following me? There's what? Can you say there's gain for me in doing the will of God? Guys, gain deal. He has called you to service, but not to a fruitless service. Your service to him will bear fruit. Oh, he said in Corinthians that God is not unjust to do what? To forget your labor of love. How do you think? He said, when he said you won't forget your labor of love, what, what do you think he's talking about? You think he'll give you eternal life? It's not eternal life. He will not forget. He will reward you. He will make you happy. <laughs> do you understand? There's gain for you in doing the will of of God. Are you following me? Friends, are you with me? Shout hallelujah. Even though you don't relate to God on a transactional basis, but you have to know that there's gift for you doing the will of God. Shout hallelujah. I did not call the president of Jacob to a fruitless service, saying, seek me for nothing, but I promised them a just reward. So God has not called you to seek him for nothing, he has not going to do his will for nothing. So there is something attached to his will. Many times, God attaches a promise to his will. And so assure our heart. Are you following me? I promise them a just reward. Are you following me? I promise them what? Talk to me. I promise them what? A just reward. So, you are going to serve me and it's going to be a fruitful service. It's not like Nigeria that, that you serve for 35 years. Your pension said, before they pay you, you, you'll have finished dying. There's reward for serving the Lord. There's reward for doing His will. 
I promised them what? I promised them what? A just reward. Do you understand this statement as well? Let, let me read verse 19 again. I have not spoken in secret in the corner of the land of that. So when I'm talking to you, I'm not hiding it. I'm capable of doing what I'm saying. Are you following me? I did not call the descendants of Jacob to a fruitless service, saying, seek me for nothing. So I call it to seek me. So, in case you are afraid, are you following me? Because <laughs> one of the fears that Satan uses to stop us from following God's will is, the, is, is, is that what will my life turn out to become? Are you following me? Praise Jesus. That's one, that's one of the fears. That if I stop this thing I'm doing, if I follow God's will, what will become of my life? Is that not true? Some people don't want to get close to God because they're afraid. What will become of my life? How will I get money? What will become of my life? That's one of the fears. Are you following me? So sometimes God, told, God shows you that He comes to do His will. Are you following me? I want to t- tell you that He's capable of taking care of your needs. Are you following me? Are you following me? It's also because I'll show you that what? He's capable of doing what? Taking care of your needs. So begin to give you, give, give you his promises so he can assure your heart so that he can follow his will. He said, I'm not speaking in, he said, I'm not speaking in corner. I know, I'm sure what I'm saying. You can't serve me in vain. Are you following me? So he can assure their heart so that as they, so that they can keep serving the Lord with all their heart. So they can keep seeking the Lord because they know that they are not seeking him for nothing. You know, there's a reward for seeking him. And he has put in that reward. Friends, are you ready? Can I show you in the words of Peter? I love Peter. Thank God that that guy followed Jesus. So that we don't understand many things. We think we are kind Look at the words of Peter. Or let's look at Hebrews first. Look at Hebrews first. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. In case, so in case you have been thinking that I'm kind in what I'm saying. Come and hear the Bible. And that was God that spoke there in that, in that Isaiah. God was speaking that he promised them a just reward. And it's to assure our heart. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Now look at it. But without faith, it is impossible to what? To place him. Without faith is what? Impossible to what? To place him. Watch it all. For he that cometh to God must what? Believe that he is. And that's, that's so beautiful. Are you following me? But faith is not complete by simply believing that God is. Are you following me? Some of you can believe that God is. But you can't believe God to provide a phone for you. <laughs> is that not true? Is that not true? Is that not true? How many of you, how many of you, that, how many of you here doubt that God exists? Nobody. But how many of you can believe God for a phone? That's not complete faith. Are you following me? I'm going somewhere. <laughs> ah, yeah. And we have many Christians who, who can believe that God is. See? If your faith can only believe that God is, are you following me? You will be holy, but you will suffer. Are you following me? Are you with me? Are you with me? If you can only believe that God is, you will be holy, but you what? You suffer. You suffer. Because God himself, what he calls full package of faith, it's not just that God is. That means faith shows itself in two facets. Believing that God is, that regardless what happened, God is. It is God first. Are you following me? But without faith, it is what to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And what? And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are you with me now? So faith believes that God is. Oh my Jesus. That God is, that God exists, that God is by himself. That is, I am, and not also, and not just that, but that is also a rewarder. That God rewards. That God does what? 
God rewards. That God does what? Please turn off that phone. That God does what? <laughs> rewards. Are you following me? Without faith, it is possible to please God, to please Him. For he that comes to God, must believe that He is, is all sufficient, is all assistant. He's self-assistant. Are you following me? He's by himself. He doesn't need you. Are you following me? But that is not enough. That is not the full package of faith. He continues and says that what? And that is a rewarder of them. That they genuinely seek him. Some of can believe that God is, but cannot believe him for a reward. Are you following me? And those that believe that God is, not say, is your, no, God, your will. Whatever happens to them, say, your will, no, God, your will, no, God, your will. But you can't believe God for a miracle. You can't believe God for a shoe, for a pair of shoes. You can't believe God. You can't believe God. Are you following me? Are you following me? And very soon, if you can't believe God, that God is a rewarder, are you following me? You might soon stop believing that He is. Oh, you don't understand. When you're on the path of God's will, and you can no longer see the promise of God, you might soon leave the path of His will. Are you following me? So men and Satan comes to be cloud our hearts and makes us stop seeing the promises of God so we can stop following the will of God. Do you understand? Are you with me? Men and Satan does what? It comes to be cloud our hearts to make us what? stop seeing the promises of God. Why? So we can stop following the will of God. Because, because believing that he is must go hand in hand. We believe that what is a rewarder. Are you following me? And this reward that you know with eternal life, you know, just are you following me? It's a reward of them that diligently seeking. Are you following me? Guys, if you are if you are diligently seeking God, God plans to reward you. Are you following me? If you are doing the will of God, if you are obeying his command, he plans to do what? Reward you. Can you say reward? Can you say God is a rewarder? Can you say God is? And is a rewarder. Amen. So God, look at look at the way the Bible speaks here. But without faith, it is important to please Him. Oh my Jesus! So that means that if you don't even believe that is a rewarder, you can't still please Him because is being a rewarder is part of the package of faith. Are you following me? So the faith. That pleases God is the faith that believes that He is, and not just so, but that is also a rewarder. Because if you can stop believing the promises of God, you can stop following the will of God. Do you understand that now? If you can stop what? If you can stop believing the promises of God, you can stop what? Following the will of God. If you can stop believing that God is a rewarder, you can stop believing that God is. Because it's the same faith you need. Are you following my friends? And that's why some Christians have vastly dead. Because they could no longer see God's promises. They could no longer see the rewarder and the reward that he's planning to bring. So, oh, he no longer is, Jerry. God is. Have you not, have you followed? What am I saying? Is it, is it strange? You understand what I'm talking about? Some Christians backslide, they leave God. They stop following Jesus because of this reason. Because, they, because the reward is no longer clear to them. Are you following me? Because the promises are no longer there. They cannot see, see the promises anymore. Guys, God's promises are sure about in following his will. If Satan can take your assurance of God's promises, are you following me? He can take away your heart from following God's will. So God knows, God knows what he's doing when he's promising you. And ask him to do his will. Is to keep your heart in the path of his will. It is for your heart. It's to test your heart. Because God knows that your heart. Friends, are you following me? Your heart has more affinity for God's promise than for God's will. <laughs> are you following me? Our heart. And God is not angry. Because eventually, as you will see, not tonight again. The promise of God eventually leads us to the will of God. That's all for tonight.
So God is not angry that our heart has so much affinity for his promises than it does for his will. Because eventually the end produces what? The promising word will lead us into his will. God's promises is like a... Now when you are going on all those safari trips and all of that, there's someone that used to take them around. What do they used to call them? A tall guard or something. Right? God's promises is like what? It's like a tall guard that leads us into the will of God. It's a trap. God wants to ensure that in every way you are found in his will. Are you following me? So eventually the will of God, are you following me? I mean, eventually the promise of God to lead us what? Into the will of God. So that's why God is not angry that our hearts have more affinity than what? For his promises than for what? His will. Are you following me? So he keeps using his, his promise to test our heart, to assure our heart in following what? His will. Because he knows that if we can, if our heart stops believing his promise, hey, our heart can stop following his will. Are you following me? Are you following me? Many people were on fire following the Lord. Are you following me? See, see, if you see Christians who don't believe God for material things, run from them. They will soon, they will soon backslide. Are you following me? Christians who cannot believe God for earthly things, they don't want to, in their, in their relationship with God, it's just eternal life, heaven, heaven, heaven. Nothing like God providing clothes for them, providing shoes for them. They don't want to let you go on that level. They will soon backslide. Are you following me? Because that is not faith that pleases God. Guys, are you with me? Do you always slide? Just focus on God. The earth is Babylon. School is Babylon. The Babylonian system. Forsake it. God does not plan to give you all of this, any of this thing. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I'm on fire for God. Just seek the will of God. I just love God. God is. God is. I believe that God is. No slide. Because without faith, we can't please Him. For he that cometh to God. If you are going to arrive at God, you must believe two things. Are you following me? He that cometh to what? To God. Oh, friends, are you with me? Are you with me? Come. Onyeka, come. Mimi, come. Praise Jesus, say, Ramon. Shout hallelujah. This is God. Are you following me? Praise Jesus, say, Ramon. Shout hallelujah. I need, I need one more person. Come. This is God. This is where you are coming. This is the person coming to God. Are you, are you following me? She's on a journey. Don't stay. Don't be free. She's on a journey to God. Becoming like God and arriving at God. Exactly like God. Arriving at God. She's on that journey. Are you following me? God now says, the person, come, come. Be free, be free. Don't. The person that will arrive at God. Then that will start that journey. Are you following me? Of coming to God and arrive at God. He says, he can only do it by faith. Are you following me? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God. Who is, he who is on a journey to God. The Bible now says that his faith must be directed at two things concerning the nature of God. <laughs> are you following me? Friends, are you with me? Shout hallelujah. That if you are going to come to God, arrive, arrive at God, your faith must be directed at two particular nature of God. He now says if you are coming to God, now this is his. This is the existence of God. Are you following me? And this is him as a, this is, is a rewarder. His assistance is reward. He must believe that he is and is a rewarder. You understand? This is he is, this is a rewarder. He now says if you are actually coming to God, you can't come alone. If you, if you are just coming with he is, having faith that he is, he said you will never be moving back. You'll be, you'll be getting far from You can never get to him. But you think you are pressing in. Guys, are you with me? Yes, you think you are pressing in. 
Are you following me? You think you are praising because you believe that he is just the will of God, the will of God. I'm just seeking the will of God. Nothing of the earth. Lord, nothing of the earth, nothing of the earth, nothing of the earth. He's just God. God, I'm seeking God. God is going far from you. You can't get to God. Are you following me? And if, go back, you stay. Mary, come forward. Mimi, come. And if you take, is a rewarder. That, oh, I know the Lord will reward me. As I'm seeking him, I know he's going to reward me. And you've taken that part of his will, of your heart being on his will. He said, you keep coming to him. He said, you're not, you're not still find him. He said, but now we arrive at God. Must journey with his faith premise on this true nature of God towards man. His existence, his being, and his rewarding nature. Now when you journey with these two, knowing that God is, and knowing that he's a rewarder, he said you will come to God. We arrive at God. Go and sit down. You can't arrive at God. You can't come to God if you don't believe that he is and is a rewarder. So that's why some of our brothers backslide because they no longer see God as a rewarder. They stop seeing the promises. The future stop looking bright. Are you following me? It is only God's promises that make the future look bright. Oh. Are you following me? It's God's promises though. If you are seeing your future ahead of you and it's looking bright, you are still seeing God's promises. So. Are you following? So, some of our brothers look at the, at the future and there's nothing there. It's bleak, it's dark, it's ugly. What has happened to them? Their eyes, their heart have been what? Blinded to the what? The promises of God. Are you following me? And because they chose to just, his will, his will of God. It's the will of God. Every other thing is Babylon. We don't want, we don't want it. Satan now uses that that system, that stupid, they think they are pressing him. Satan is using to blind their hearts towards the rewarding nature of God. You need to blind their heart towards the promises. You understand? Because they think that by, by rejecting the promises, by rejecting the, the rewarding nature of God, by not focusing on, by, by just focusing on, he is, he is, the will of God, the consciousness of God, just focus, just press, just press. They think by just focusing on, they think they will get to God. But it's not true. Instead, God will be far from them. They'll become far down from God. And some of them virtually backslide. Because the God they say they are pressing in to. You understand? It's as if that God keeps making their, their life miserable. It's as if he, he keeps make, making them wretched. It's as if he keeps, he keeps giving them sicknesses, different poverty, affliction. And he's not the one. Oh, may Satan not eyes to cheat you. Because you can't believe in God's promises. Because you cannot see him as a rewarder. Because you don't, you don't, you don't seek anything good from God. You don't seek material things. Satan can give you poverty. Maybe you just want to serve God. And you're serving with poverty. Serving with sickness. You don't think it's God's dealing. It's not God's dealing, no. You can no longer see that he's a rewarder. Are you following me? And many of them, is that sickness or that poverty that will not make them go back from following God. Are you following me? So God assures our heart in following his will how? By giving us his promises. To make it clearer. Last, let's look at Peter. I love that guy so much. Look at Matthew. Look at Peter. See what Peter said. So you know that this is, see, this is scripture. It's a reward. So as you are diligently seeking God, guys, have at the back of your mind that you what? He will reward you. Me, I know he will reward me. Me, I'm sure. He has told me, he has promised me. And I look forward to it. Are you following me? Can you say he's a rewarder? Guys, this God, he reward though. He rewards though. It's all over the scriptures though. He rewards though. And that is part of the emblem of your faith. Not just that he is, but that he is a rewarder of those that legitimately seek him. Look at Matthew, look at what, what Peter said. Matthew chapter, chapter 19. Yeah, so that's basically clearer. So God promises us, are you following me? When he asks us to do his will, sometimes he promises us because he wants to assure our heart in following his will. Now look at Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. Look at it from verse 27. Now don't forget this story. If you keep reading, if you read, if you, if you back up and read, 
This was when Jesus Christ, when a man came to Jesus, the young ruler, are you following me? He came to Jesus and said, good master, what shall I do to inherit what? Eternal life. If you back up and read, amen. He was going to say, what, why do you call me good, blah, blah, blah. Okay, obey the Lord. He said, I obeyed it from my youth. He said, go and sell all your goods and come and follow me. You have your treasures in heaven. Come and follow me. Now say, the disciples now say, the man now went away sad. The disciples now say, who then can follow? Who then can do these things? God now say, with man is impossible. With God, all things are possible. Now watch it. It's a, that's the backdrop of, of this conversation. You understand? Jesus said the man should leave everything and follow him. That's the backdrop of the conversation. Now look at, I love Peter so much. The man made us see many secrets. I know I've been showing different scriptures on this one thing that I'm saying. God's promises are very important for us. Are you following me? If they were not important, we would not start. It's, of course, it's not it's we with Abraham, because that's the most important thing. And that's what it starts with us. But some, many times it follows, it follows up with his promises. Because our hearts have to be assured that he has not called us towards to seek him in vain. Are you following me? He has not called us of Jacob to do what? Guys, can you say God has not called me to seek him in vain? Me, I'm sure of my own life. Oh. This life is sure. You will see me in the future. You will see me. And when I say future, I'm, I'm, it's not far. Oh. Be surprised. Ah, ah, I knew this past, this past, I knew. Ah, ah, I knew when I was at the GCC, go to now. I'm serious. I'm very serious. There were people who started with, De- with Papa Yodebo. Is it not true? The people who started with the Adebo, there was a place they started from. Are you following me? But the future unfolded. Destiny unfolded. The promise came to pass. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friends? They stay with the promise and with the we. Are you following me, my friend? Me, I'm sure of the promise, so. And you must be sure of the promise that, that, that he has made to you. Are you with me? You must be what? You must be what? Sure of the promise he has made to you. He plans to reward you. As long as you keep seeking him diligently. Are you following me? The Bible doesn't say we will reward those that, those that believe that he is. Oh. Are you following me? You have, as you seek him diligently, as you follow his will, as you obey his command, he will he plans to reward you. Now, Matthew makes it clear. In case you are not clear, in case it's looking like a parable to your ears. Look at this thing at Matthew, at Matthew chapter 19 from verse 27. Now look at it. Verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, unto who? Unto Jesus. Behold, we have forsaken all and what? Followed thee. Do you know what that means? We have forsaken all to do your will. Are you with me, my friends? We have forsaken all to obey your command. We have forsaken all to obey your instructions. We have forsaken all to do your will. We have forsaken all to seek you. Eh? What did he say? What shall we have thereof? <laughs> Peter, Peter, you know, correct guy. What shall we do what? What shall we what? Have thereof. What will be our reward for following you? Because he that comes to God must what? Believe that he is. And the reward of them that didn't seek him. He rewards. What shall we have? What is our gain in this? We are forsaken. Okay, Lord, we are following you now. Is this our life is poor? What are we going to have at the end of the day? Guys, your life is not spoiled with this Jesus. So. Your, your life won't spoil with him. He plans to reward you. Are you following me? In case, the, the, in case everywhere I've been reading is not clear, this one is very clear. Peter was not speaking about it, but the guy was blunt. What will you give me? I'm doing your way. What will you give me? What will you give? Where do you go? Where do you go get? How much, how much will you carry to my account? <laughs> Guys, are you with me? How much you go credit into my account and they do your will? Are you following me? What will you give us? That's the meaning. What shall we have? What will be my reward for doing your will? Because there's a reward for doing his will. <laughs> are you with me? Friends, are you with me? Are you with me? You must love the will of God. Are you following me? But the reward of God is a motivation for doing His will. God motivates us. Even at work, you, people have learned how to motivate their workers. How much more God? They learned it from God, from the Bible. Are you following me? Are you following me? 
The promise of God, the reward of God motivates us to do His will. Because we need motivation. We need assurance. It assures our heart. Peter said, what will you give us? Or you can say, God, what will you give me? God, you said I should do this. I should do this. What will you give? What will I gain from it? I'm serious. What will you give me? God now takes you serious. God loves you. Why? He sees that you also believe that rewarding part of him. You understand? He sees that your faith is complete. That you don't know that, that he is. That you also believe that he's a rewarder. He loves you so much. How Jesus loves Peter. God loves men who can, who can also believe that he's a rewarder. Are you following me? Because men, you know why God loves men like that? And why he has given, why he has shown us this way to walk with him? That, that what you must believe that he is and he's also a rewarder. You know why God has made it that way? And why he loves men that, that also believe his, his rewarding capacity? It's because oftentimes we have been wrongly taught and Satan has deceived us that if we follow God's will, that our lives will be miserable. <laughs> Are you following me? We have taught other people don't want to follow God. They think following God means your life will be miserable. Some people will say they will never be married a pastor because they think many marrying a pastor means you'll be poor. Who has taught us wrongly? God, who can reward a man as God? So many people want to run from the work of ministry. Many people don't want to be a pastor. Many people don't want to be a minister. Many people don't want to marry a pastor because they feel they'll suffer. Who told you? Who told you I'm suffering? Who told you I'm suffering? And the enjoyment has not even started and I'm not even suffering now. And I've never started enjoying. Are you following me? Of course, there are days that there is no food. But the days that there is food is more than the days that there is no food. Are you following me? There are days that there is no fish and meat. But the days that we have fish and meat is more than the days that there is no fish and meat. I've not suffered before. I've been thankful, but I've not suffered. And I've not started enjoying. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I've not, what I've not, the enjoyment has not started. Who told you that the pastor who, you, I pity you young ladies. I can't marry a pastor. I can't marry a pastor. You'll not be, I don't want to suffer. Suffer where? Where is suffering? Where is suffering? Do I look as someone that is suffering? But do you know the funny thing? It did not look like this five years ago. It didn't look like this ten years ago. It didn't look like this four years ago. It didn't, like, it didn't look like this six years ago. <laughs> Amen. But our heart was assured in his promise. And gradually, we are seeing the unveiling of his promise. And we've never started. Are you following me? So we have been wrongly taught. Our hearts have been wrongly conditioned to think that following God means misery, a miserable life. That following God means your life will be, will be restricted. That following God means you'll be poor. Are you following me? So God has to show you that no, it's not true. I the reward. Those that didn't follow me, I reward them. I give them stuff. I set them up. I set to them. I pay them. One of the things God has told me, one of the profound things He has told me, let me tell you two. One day He told me, I was praying. I was one of those that I was tired. I was looking for a job. I was staying as a Jodi beggar in church. And he told me, I pray that Lord, I want to know now I'm praying that God, what's happening? What's happening? All of that. God told me, He said, Omolayo, do you know what I want to tell you this morning? I just want to tell you that your physical life is small. Ha! If I remember those words, it's used to. Do you know what? Do you know the meaning of that word? You might know that what it means. He said, I just, I was worried. I was. I was planning to get married, no money, no job, nothing. I went to pray just in the church. It just called my name. I had in my heart. Oh my life, you know what I want to tell you this morning? I just want to tell you that your physical life is small. That was the end of my prayer that day. Do you know what it means? You know when I'm going to tell you that uh, your needs is small. <laughs> Say, I want to tell you that your physical life is small. Do you understand the meaning of that statement? Ah. I pray you understand. It means don't stress yourself. Don't worry. I will take care of it. Another day he told me. He said, go and face your ministry. I'll be paying you. Go and do what? Face your ministry. I'll be doing what? I'll be paying you. That God has been paying me. And that payment has not even started. So if you're angry with him. 
If tomorrow comes and you say, not if, when tomorrow comes and you say private jet, don't be angry. Oh. He has promised me. Oh. He has told to come and face my ministry and you will be paying me and I've been trying to face it. Even though there was a time I was facing and facing, facing on that thing. <laughs> and that thing I was facing was not facing. <laughs> May you learn to follow the will of God. It's really so sweet. I can teach these things actually, even though I'm still learning also. Many times, there are times I fail, but I keep learning. Are you following me? He said, face, go and face your ministry, I'll be paying you. I had it. Clearly. Clearly. I'll be paying you. And he has already started paying me. He has, he has started paying me, he has already started. This one you have seen in small, small things. The pay go come to be big, massive. So don't be angry when you start seeing the pay. And if you have seen small, small ones, don't be angry. I'm doing me, I'm doing what they ask me to what? To do. You what they ask you to do. That's what they will pay you for. That's what they will pay you for. <laughs> you understand? It's what they ask you to do, do that they'll do what? That they will pay you for. Me, if I keep doing what they ask me to do, they will pay me and it will be plenty. So if you don't do your own, I'm angry at my own pay. It's your problem. <laughs> are you following me? So we have been wrongly taught and our heart has been structured that if we follow God's will, our life will be miserable, that we will suffer. Because it is not true. Say, go and face your ministry. You won't suffer. I'll be paying you. Says your physical life is small. He says, I'll take care of you. I'll bless you. You'll be rich. Hi. I'll not tell you this one. This God. So that if you look at what he has promised you and where you are, you think he has lied to you. You think he lied, but he didn't lie. God has told me things that crazy things. If I look at where, I, where I'm coming from, where I am now, it doesn't look like what he has told me. Crazy things. <laughs> See, can I tell you one thing that we have? I'll not, I'll not tell you the exact way God said it. But I'll be have, one thing that I will have is money. I will have plenty of money. I'm telling you now that you don't think when that, that time comes, you'll not be angry with me. I will not tell you what God told me. But I'm sure of what? Plenty money. I will, be, I will have plenty of money. I'm sure. It's part of the promises he gave me. And that's why we are needing to run. That's why we are running this way very well. Uh, you see, when, 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 when I'm tired, we are still doing service. I'm doing Bible study. Because we have to, this promise, we have to receive it. <laughs> the promise of God keeps your heart in His will. It assures your heart. Are you following me? So we have been wrongly taught that serving God means our life will be poor and miserable. But God says it's not true. So He says, we have left all to for, 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 we have forsaken, behold. He says, see, oh, see, see, see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. See, look here. We have forsaken all and followed it. What shall we have there of? See, now like this, our, our life go end. Our life going to be miserable. Look at what Jesus Christ said. Now, so you, for you, you are the people that are very spiritual than Jesus. See his response to. Jesus didn't rebook him. This is a bit of why are you thinking like a kind of person. You are too kind of, before, before God, before God, before God on the kingdom. Focus on God, focus on God. No, you need to focus on God. Because he is God. And he's a rewarder. So he wants to show Peter his reward system. For forsaking all to follow him. That for you who are forsaking all and follow me, for you who are really any seeking me, I will show you my reward system. And for you to understand that, see, this reward we are talking about is not just heaven, it's not eternal life. It's for this life. It go bless you. Can I say it go bless me? I go get money. Your money, your wealth is in the will of God, though. You know, that's what I've been telling you. Your happiness is in the will of God. That happiness you want. That armor you want to armor. That money is in the will of God. Don't stress yourself. Because he had, are you following me? Another guy gives you his promises. Look at what Jesus Christ said. In case you feel, I'm just saying story. And Jesus said unto them. And Jesus did what? Said unto them. Verily I say unto you. When Jesus uses it, verily. Ah! You don't even know verily. You know if it change. Verily. Everyone now says verily, verily. <laughs> verily I say unto you. Where is it? Verse 20. I say unto you that that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall also sit upon twelve thrones, joining the twelve thrones of Israel. That's not where he stopped though. In some in some 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 other passages, maybe like Luke or Mark, he did not even start with this statement. 
with regeneration. He ended with regeneration. But look at, don't just be happy about regeneration. So let me explain something to you. Your reward for following God is both in this life and life to come. It's a beautiful reward. Are you following me? Are you with my friends? Your reward, your, your reward for following God is where? Is both in this life and in life to come. In the Bible says, Paul was speaking, he said, if only in this life our hope, we have hope in Christ, we are more miserable than what all men. That means we are, our hope in Christ is twofold. This life and life to come. Guys, there's a hope for you in Christ concerning this life. Oh. Don't let any stupid gospel trick you into poverty. Oh. Poverty is not God's plan for you. Are you as, as, affliction, sickness is not God's plan for you. There's a hope, there's a portion of your hope in Christ that is directed towards this life. Are you following me? So he says in the regeneration, he said, during the twelve tribes of Israel. Now look at, look at, look at, look at it. And everyone that has forsaken houses, houses, where are the houses? Are they in heaven? Are they spiritual things or physical? Houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or what? Or lands. For my name's sake shall what? Shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Shall do what? Don't live everlasting life for now. Let's look at that one on it. Shall receive hundredfold of material things. So more than what you left to follow God. You receive an hundredfold. Jesus Christ has said it with his mouth. Material things. If you look at some other, some other Bible portions, other part of the gospel, I think Mark and Luke, they started with those material things. So they now ended with everlasting life. You follow me? So Jesus Christ said, for following me, you will, what you left, the physical things you left to follow me. Number one, they will translate into eternal life for you. But there's a reward for the world to come. And I'm saying in this life also, I will multiply the things you left to follow me. There's a multiple reward for you, multiple harvest. <laughs> so you left a job of 50k to follow my will. Just because I said it's times 100. Do you understand? And times 100 was not be 500 times 100. It means you will have it in fullness, in abundance. You understand? You have it what? In fullness. Because that 50k was not even fullness. Are you following me? It says the material things you have will be in fullness, will be in abundance. Are you with me now, my friends? So people say, what are we going to have? You can not say, what is kilo kilo you, you love reward too much. Because reward is part of the part of the hope of a Christian man. Are you following me? Are you following me? Reward is what? Part of the hope of a Christian man. His promise is part of our hope. Are you following me? God's promises are what? Part of our hope. Because they assure our heart in following His will. So God gives us promises to do what? To assure our heart in following His will. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Can we get to pray? I'll continue next week, Thursday, by God's grace. Can we just pray and talk to God? 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 Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Thank him for his promises. His promises are true. His promises are true. His promises are true. He doesn't fail on them. He keeps his promises. He doesn't fail on them. He doesn't fail on them. Oh, he doesn't fail on them. He doesn't fail on his words. He keeps his words. He keeps his word. Can you pray? Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. He keeps his word. He can't fail. He can't fail. He assures your heart through his promises. His promises are an anchor for your soul. The hope of his promises is, is a sure anchor for our soul. It's a sure anchor for your soul. So your soul can continue to follow his will, follow hard and time. He's interested in our soul being committed to his will. And one of the things he does to assure us is to give us promises. He looks for every way to make us stay in his will. And one of those ways is his promises. Can you pray? Talk to the Lord. Oh, Ranana Mande Keleba to Sivaya.